from the heartland of America to every nation on earth. This is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. You know, my friends, I've always felt so very, very safe here in the United States, but I'm going to give you a headline that we will deal with, and it is. Head of the U.S. Intelligence says that an Iranian attack on America and its allies likely, very likely. Also, new Bible, oh dear, yanks out father and son as the son of God. My, oh my. And then the Dutch rethink Christianity for a doubtful world. They're saying, well, we don't quite know what we should believe. But we'll examine that in a moment, too. And as I said, I've always felt safe here in the United States. But with what is going on over in Iran and all of the Middle East there, I think we need to be much more aware and much more vigilant. Take a look at the Wall Street Journal spy chief, and that's the director of national intelligence, sees Iran threats in the United States. Also, Iranian attack on American allies, increasingly likely, intelligence chief says. Now, of course, that is the head of the U.S. intelligence. Now, I cannot believe this. We have another attack that could be, that is likely, and it's going on right now. The cover of Newsweek, the war on Christians. Now, friends, Jack has spoken about all of this in pre on previous shows, but we want to deal with them in depth a little bit more here today. And I'm going to ask him something that's very, very important as we see what's going on in the world as far as war, even that could come here to the United States worse than 9-11. And then as we see the attack on what's happening Christians around the world, every five minutes a Christian in the Middle East is killed simply because he's a Christian. Jack, is this probably one of the last signs pointing to the return of the Lord? Oh, Rexella, it is. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1, this and also the last time, perilous, dangerous time shall come. It's here. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation since there never was. Since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And it's called the great tribulation in Revelation 7, verse 14. And Paul in Romans 13, verses 11 and 12 says, knowing the time that now it is high time to awaken out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. When he said our salvation is nearer than when we believed, he's talking there about the salvation of the body. When we hear the voice crying out in the heavenlies, come up hither, and we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in trouble. I've been warning you. I read a book every day. I read 100 periodicals a week. I have my man, CEO, Ken Vansel, working on the computers five hours a day, getting me the latest information. Ahmadinejad has 40,000 suicide bombers ready to come. And as Diane Sawyer said a few weeks ago, they are infiltrating through Canada, and they're going to strike. Right now, we have hundreds of North Korean nuclear scientists working with this Ahmadinejad to produce that nuclear bomb, and when he gets it, all hell will break loose. But thank God, I don't think we're going to be here. The Bible plainly says in Revelation 3.10, talking to the Christians who are ready, I'll keep you from, and that's the Greek word ek, out of the hour of temptation and testing which comes upon the whole world. Yes, we're going to be kept from it. And you know, as we approach December 21st, 2012, the History Channel keeps running material. And they said, Nostradamus predicted World War III and Armageddon, Revelation 16.16, 16, sometime this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not setting dates, but the time is at hand. It's closing time. Jesus is coming soon. Prepare to meet thy God. Amos 
4, verse 12. Oh, Jack, it is so very, very, very serious. But, in fact, the other day somebody said to me, Excel, you report some things that are scary. Aren't you really afraid? And I told him, I said, no, I'm concerned, but I'm not afraid because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. I'm not troubled, friends, because Jesus, God, is in control. He's in control of everything. But one thing I'm concerned about, along with Iran and the, what uh, could possibly happen out of those countries, is the decline of our churches. Please take a look. 80% of American churches are in a plateau or decline during the last five-year period. 10,000 churches closed their doors in the last five years. Revival changes everything if we could go in that direction. And I love this gentleman, my oh my, of the past, Vant Havner. This is what he had to say. Revival is the church falling in love with Jesus all over again. Oh, I love that. And then going on, David Bryant. Biblical revival is supremely sun-focused, S-O-N. It is utterly Christ-dominated. Some of us call it a Christ awakening. If any spiritual experience, whether called revival or something else, diminishes, bypasses, or leads people away from Christ, it is not of God and holds no hope for any generation. Do you notice the focus there, friends, that David Bryan gave? The focus is on Jesus Christ. If we don't have him as our Savior, we really don't have a message. But how wonderful to know that we can focus on the Lord, know that he is the Savior of our soul, the Savior of the world. And when the churches are led in the wrong direction, Jack, what does that signal to us? We should be concerned about how they're diminishing. Oh, Rexella, I like what John... Calvin said, the founder of the Christian Reformed Churches of the world, he said, without Christ, there is no Christianity. You better believe it. 400 times this book says the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And our president doesn't accept that as we're going to see next week. Tell others, call him on the phone. But let's see what God has to say. Does this agree with John Calvin's teaching? Amen, it does. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the precious name of Jesus. The Philippian jailer looked at Paul and Silas as they were in prison. And he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And oh, I love Romans 1.4, God declared the be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And that's the Christ that saves you. No other way. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. If you don't, you won't be saved. And we are to preach the gospel. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And what is that gospel? Let Paul tell you again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, I preach unto you the gospel. What is it? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, verses 3 and 4. And that's why Paul could say in Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of good news about Christ, for it and it alone is the way of salvation. We could go on and on, but we've got so much to handle right now. Some of the greatest blasphemy in the history of Christianity has just taken place. Organizations that for a hundred years translated the Bible and were true to God now have a bunch of apostate ministers heading up their movements, and they have stripped Jesus of his deity. He is no longer the Son of God, and I am mad. Ephesians 4.26 says, be angry and sin not. Someone said, well, can't you preach that in love? No, I don't want to. Why? Because when my Savior who preached love saw the corruption of religious leaders in his day, he went into a temple with a wick, and tonight I'm not sparing anything. I'm going to be as bold as I've ever been. And I know some of you Christian stations are glad I'm gone now because you wouldn't let me run this, but I'm going to speak from my heart. 
because I'm tired of the blasphemy that's going on within Christendom right now. Whoa, right now. Can you imagine it? I didn't ever dream that I would ever see anything like this. You know, pastors, teachers, missionaries need to be very careful to give the gospel. The gospel is all about the Lord. The gospel of the Bible. Now, Jack mentioned a moment ago about Wycliffe. Bible translators, take a look, please, at this headline. New Bible yanks father and Jesus as son of God. Oh, my. Here it is. Wycliffe defends changing titles for God. Now, would you like to read this, Jack? I think it's very, very important. Rexella, I never thought I'd live to see such ungodly compromise by apostates like this, and they're trying to explain why they did it. Wycliffe Bible translators is firing back at an allegation that it is softening, no, changing the language of the Bible. It prepares for Muslim countries in order not to offend the Muslim majorities there. Uh, WND reported earlier on the developing controversy that involves Wycliffe Bible translators, the Summer Institute of Linguistics and Frontiers, all of which were reported producing Bible translations that remove or modify terms which they have deemed offensive to Muslims. Oh, my. Involved is the removal of any references to God as Father, to Jesus as the Son, or the Son of God. One example of such a change can be seen in an Arabic version of the Gospel of Matthew produced and promoted by Frontiers and SIL. It changes Matthew 28, 19 from this, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to this. Listen to this blasphemy. Cleanse them by water in the name of Allah, his Messiah, Mahdi, and his Holy Spirit. I use Mahdi because I know his name from Ahmadinejad, bragging how Mahdi will come when he kills all the Jews and Christians, and I'll tell you, we are really in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do I think about these kind of people? Are you listening? My Bible tells me that they are preaching damnable heresy, Second Peter 2, 1 and 2. First Timothy 4, 1, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. How do you like that? 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 to 4, preach the word. Amen. Be instant in season, out of season. When they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But they'll heap to themselves teachers to tickle their ears. And they shall be turned away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. God forgive you, Wycliffe and Sill, and frontiers for what you've done to my God and my Jesus. There's more to follow. Oh, yes, you know, and when you try to put Islam and Christianity together, there's a word that we have used. You've seen it on our program. Take a look, Chrislam, how missionaries are promoting an Islamized gospel. Islamized gospel? My, oh, my, you know, friends, and I want to ask Jack this question. We're going over there to try and help them to become Christians. So how can we help them to become followers of Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, if we take it all away? We don't have a message, how we? destroy do we? who Christ is? No, it's meaningless. Now, I'm going to tell you something that really shakes me. Christ is from old, from everlasting. All right, Micah 5, 2. He wasn't just born in Bethlehem. He was the God from all eternity. Proverbs 30, verse 4 says, what's God's name? Hey, what's his son's name? You blasphemers have taken out every verse of the 91 that says Jesus is the Son of God. Now, in Matthew 16, beginning with verse 15, Jesus saw Peter, one of his apostles, and he said, Peter, who do you say I am? He said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus replied, On this rock that I am Christ, the Son of the living God, will I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And they never will, even with you compromisers, using the name of Allah and his prophet Mahdi and his spirit. 
and they have just murdered so many Christians around the world. Newsweek, I preached all this last week. I'm ahead of all of them, and I'm going to be ahead on this. Now, is Jesus a son of God, yes or no? The angel appeared to Mary, and he said in Luke 1.35, because she was questioning herself, how is this going to be that I'm going to have this son of God, and I know not a man? The angel answered and said to her, Mary, that holy thing which you shall bring forth shall be called the Son of God. Amen. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, <laughs> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son of God does not have life. Verse 36, the wrath of God abides on him. And that goes for all you guys that are trying to take the deity away from the Lord Jesus Christ. My Bible says that he is God, Romans 9, 5, 1 Timothy 3, 16. But let's go on about the Son of God. Boy, do I love this. Hebrews 1, verse 8. This is the Father, Yahweh. Not Allah, Yahweh, speaking to his own son in Hebrews 1.8 and says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He not only calls him his son, he calls him God. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not like this. I don't care if you do or not. I'm sticking to this book. What you guys are doing is the spirit of the Antichrist. Antichrist shall come, 1 John 2.18, 1 John 2.22, 1 John 4.3, and 2 John 1.7. But what is it that God calls the spirit of Antichrist? Back to 1 John 2.22. Whosoever denies the relationship between the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. God forgive you, men. May you get right with God soon and come back to preaching the truth. But I don't think people... People will want to support you anymore. You know, Jack, actually, everyone can have an opinion. And if that's what they want to do, that's their opinion. But, you know, the Word of God stands. God had the Word for us to uh, believe and so we'd know the truth. How wonderful it is to know the truth because of the Bible. Thank you for the uh, Bible. There, thy Jack. Word is truth, John 17, 17. Take your dirty hands off of it and don't change it. Don't Boy, change it. you know what God says if you do? Remember, Jesus is behind the writing of the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things, the 22 chapters of the book of Revelation, to the churches. Now, over to verse 18, Jesus. Listen, God speaking, I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You're in trouble with You know, Jack, a few moments ago, you used a word, apostasy. Did you ever know that word? What does apostasy mean, Jack? Apostates. What does that mean? A defection from the Christian faith, which is happening right now. And you know what shocks me, Rexella? That La Zavatore Romano, the paper of the popes for almost 200 years, just on January 17th had a full two-page article honoring the King James Version of Wallace. These Protestant heretics are tearing God's word apart. Oh, I know, Jack, but I want to say thank you. You are a great Protestant minister, and you are sticking to the word of God. My brother Bob, Dr. Robert Shelton, Bob Jones University, many of the universities standing up for the word of God. Amen. And Dallas Theological Seminary standing up for the word of God. We need Viola to... and all of them. Absolutely. Well... Let's see what the Bible has to say about apostates. I'm going to give Jack about, woo nine words here. He's going to tell us where it's found. The Bible calls apostates grievous wolves. Acts 20:29. 20, and then also the Bible calls the apostates unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6:14. Deceitful workers. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. And this one, enemies of the cross of Christ. Philippians three eighteen. And Jack here's one, men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. First Timothy six five. Vessels of 
dishonor. Second Timothy 2.20. False teachers. Uh, Second Peter 2, 1 and 2. Then the last one on my list, Antichrist. I quoted this earlier. I quote it again. First John 2, 22, whosoever denies the Father and Son relationship, that he is the Son of the living God. He is an Antichrist. And you preachers who say, we have changed all these things to please the Muslims and we're able to reach him that way, you're reaching him by destroying the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world. First John 4, 14. Oh, Jack, how very, very serious this is. There seem to be some well-known names going in the direction of apostasy, going away from what we know the Bible teaches about the Lord America's false prophets. Then you see their chrism, oh, and that has to do with the one world church. Look at Rabbi Garagori. Here he is, and he has written something very, very good that we must read together. He stated leaders such as Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, Bill Hybels, Evangelicals of America, along with the support of 300 other less well-known Christian leaders, all signed a document asking Muslim leaders around the world for forgiveness for the Crusades and for the excesses of war on terrorism. But, you know, Jack, there's more here that I'd like for you to read, if you would. Oh, please listen, folks. Worldview Weekend. President Brandon House warns, I'm troubled by the trend to appeal to Muslims through political correctness. In 2007, Rick Warren, Bill Hybels, and others signed the Yale document that says that Muslims and Christians worship the same God. A Yale document speaks of one God when it declared, we applaud that a common word between us and you stresses so insistently the unique devotion to one God. How said, Muslims and Christians do not worship the same God? That's blasphemy. And that's baloney from Dr. Jack Van Empe as well. And God's going to deal with these people. Rexella, here's what we're going to do with these people. Are we to fellowship with them? Some 60,000 preachers are following some of these leaders. Quit it. They are misleading you. Oh, if we could be like the Apostle Paul who said, follow me as I follow Jesus, 1 Corinthians 11. 1. Don't follow these hypocritical apostates. Why? To obey God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hear it. Romans 16, verse 17, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ which you receive, and avoid them. That's plain enough, isn't it? Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And then in 2 John 1, verses 9 to 11, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If there comes any unto you who brings not the doctrine of Christ, receive him not into your home nor bid him Godspeed, say God bless you to him, for he that does so is a partaker of his evil deeds, and God will deal with you. Come out from among them and be you separate. Second Corinthians 6, 18, obey God. Oh, yes, Jack, we need to obey the Bible, and you know who I'm going to believe? I'm going to believe Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. And I accepted him as my Savior. I believe him. I came to the Father and asked forgiveness. Will you open your heart to the Lord right now? Jack, would you give that all-important invitation? Oh, Jesus is such a precious Savior that men would take their dirty hands and try to destroy him to reach a false religion. God forgive them. Now, do you want this Jesus? He loves you. He died for you. He agonized and shed his precious blood as it flowed down Calvary for you to cleanse and wash you. Now, pray this simply after me. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, I trust in you today. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. In your holy name I pray it. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You just became a child of God. Now, write to me. I'll send this to you as soon as I hear from you. There's my address. First Steps, 
in a new direction. The Lord is walking with you right now. Now, we talked about chrism, and once again, we want to present this as our offer of the week. Take a look at this promo, please. Today's video offer is undoubtedly the most powerful and undeniably the most insightful work the Vanapies have ever created. Why? It deals with the final sign pointing to the imminent return of Christ. Here's why. The Antichrist and false prophet cannot appear to control the world politically or religiously until the rapture occurs and believers are removed. Dr. Vanapie dogmatically and prophetically believes that June 26, 2011, is the beginning of the countdown to the most momentous event in history, Christ's return. On that day, churches met in 26 states to begin the union of Christianity and Islam, called Chrislam. In this video study entitled, Chrislam, the One World Religion Emerging, Dr. and Mrs. Vanapie have documented the most shocking information ever taped, using over 30 political and religious leaders to back up and verify every word spoken, including Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, President Obama, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley MacLaine, plus Jewish rabbis and Muslim clerics. What shocking statements did these celebrities make for or against Chrislam, the one world religion? You'll be shocked, stunned, and startled as you hear it. Order this video immediately if you want to know what in the world is going on politically and religiously as you examine Chrislam, the one world religion emerging. Friends, you really need to order this right now. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it right away. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order Chrislam, the one world religion emerging on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of twenty-four ninety-five to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of twenty-four ninety-five to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and let me just encourage you, you need to have this because we can't get all this in a 30-minute program. You need to know the information on here. It's so very important. It's relative to your life. So please make the call. There's our address. There's a telephone number. So make the call now. I want to leave you with a very good thought for today. It goes right along with what we've been saying. We read the newspaper to find out what's happening. We read the Bible to find out what's really going on. How true. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.